Hey everybody, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a game called Don't Go In There. Don't Go In There is a game from Road to Infamy Games. Plays two to five players, ages 10 plus, designed by, let's see if their names are on here, Andrew Nerger and Jeffrey Chin. Um, yeah, and what's it say, ages 14 plus, uh, a younger person can play this, it's not that difficult. But effectively what you're doing is you are investigating kids, going into this haunted house, uh, and trying not to get curses or get spooked. That's it. But basically what that boils down to is, we're going to be doing some worker placement. We're going to be trying to set, collect different sets of cards based on the type of card that it is. And then uh, we're going to be throwing dice down a cool dice tower that uses the box. So more on that later. And you'll see it in action when we go down to the table and check it out. Come on, play the game. All right, so here's a game of Don't Go In There, all set up for two players. To set up, first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick five different types in a two player game of these different cards. So I've picked Mirror, Witch's Brew, Amulet, Ring, and Portrait. Those are the five that I have. Then you're gonna shuffle them and you're gonna randomly remove 16 in a two player game and you're gonna flip the cards appropriately at the different locations. So three face up here, three face up here, two face up and one face down here. Put the rest of them off to the side. Each player is going to get five little meeple, kids, and they're gonna have a player screen in front of them that they're going to keep their ghost behind. I'm not going to do that just because, you know, there's no reason for that right now. It's also going to tell you how in-game works and some of the actions that you can do. But for now, we don't care about that. All right. Then you're going to build the dice tower, which uses the insert of the game and the box. And you have these five little adorable glow-in-the-dark dice here with different little crazy faces on them sitting there ready to go. All right. Now we're ready to play. So on your turn, what you're going to do is you are going to go to a location and decide which space that you want to be in. Now the top space is going to give you first choice of the cards, but you may get some ghosts by rolling die faces. Every flashlight on the die is going to protect you from ghost faces on the dice. All right. And once one of these locations has three meeples, it fires off, we get cards, and then I'll talk about that when it happens. So. Let's go ahead and start. And I think I'm gonna go here. So red's first, I'm gonna go here. And I'm gonna go one light. And this has a secret, pa uh, uh, the secret passage has a special ability. Place meeple to peak, reveal when resolving the secret passage. So I would look at this card. No one else is gonna know it's in there, but now I know it's a ring. And it goes face back, back face down. So I know that information. No one else knows that information until they go there. And that's my turn. Then it's Purple's turn. They want to know what's in this card as well. So they're going to go right there. And then now that they've looked at it, they can just flip it because we know what's going on. It says reveal, but we've both looked at it. So who cares? And then back to me, I want to, I know that's a ring. So I really want to come over here and get another ring. So let's go here. Cause even if I go second, I can still get a ring there. And then it's Purple's turn. Purple wants to... They're actually going to come up here, right there. And then red, I wanna to try to get another ring. So I'll, ooh, yeah, I'll go first. Purple is going to go over here and they're going to fire this one off and they'll go right there. All right. So this one's full. When that happens, the player who triggered it means putting the last player, uh, their character there takes the planchette. So we know whose turn it is. And then we're going to take cards. So starting up here, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna roll dice. We're gonna roll two, four, six dice because of the icons in the corner of these cards. So we're gonna roll the dice. And we have two, two, two scary faces, okay? So now what that means is you have to have two um, flashlights or more to defend against those. I am at one, so I'm gonna take one ghost and put it behind my screen. 
whoever has the most ghost at the end of the game um, the most ghost would be two if you had the most two of your ghosts would be worth one curse and you're trying to get the fewest amount of curses which are those little hands right there so I took um, a hit no one else is going to take a hit because they have more flashlights or equal to so they're good but now I get first pick of the cards and I'm going to take a ring so I'm going to take the ring put it right there if I can get four rings you can see it right there if I can get four rings I can dispel them which means turn them all face down and then the curses on those rings are no longer part of my score. So then I take my meeple back. Then the other two players, or the purple will take two ghosts because these cards give them two ghosts. All the ghost tokens are different, which is really, really cool. And they're also going to take these two mirrors. Whoops, there were three mirrors. Two of them were stuck together, so we'll pretend like that wasn't the case. And then they will put them in their tableau here. If they can get three mirrors, they can dispel three mirrors. And that's good for them. Then what happens is they take their workers back and this board gets flipped over. And now it is the library. And again, we will put three cards down. We'll try to not have them stick together. That would be ideal. All right, there we go. Now, this location, uh, order cards by ascending curse value so this one, and then these two. You take this card, you get a ghost. You take that card, you lose a ghost. So that's kind of cool. And that was purple's turn. So now it's back to red or orange, whatever color. And I think what I want to do is, I'm going to come up here. And then purple is going to come over here. Then I'm gonna come over here as well. And purple is going to fire this one off. All right, so they take the planchette again. And there are, is one, three, five ghosts. Five dice, so we roll five. And we have three ghost faces. So purple here gets two ghosts. I am protected, nope. I get one ghost and then purple is on the three so they dodge all of those that time all right then starting with purple we get to they get to take a card and i think they're going to take the witch's brew and they'll put it right here this one says discard this card and take two ghosts or if you get two witches brew you can discard five ghosts so they're gonna try to get a second witch's brew all right now Here's the tricky part, so that's purple. Then, red's turn. Red is going to take um, the two curse. At the end of the game, they're gonna be able to dispel an amulet with three curse. So they're gonna try to get a three curse amulet, which is too bad because purple is taking that one. And they'll put it right there. All right, and then they take their worker back. And then this will flip. We now have the nursery. We'll refill. Another witch's brew, another witch's brew, and another amulet. All right. And that's how the game's going to keep going. You're going to keep doing that until this deck runs out, and then all of the locations have been activated and all the cards are gone. Then you're going to, any in game cards you have, you'll do that. Um, whoever has the most ghosts, every ghost they have, every two ghosts is worth a curse. And then after all that is done, you're going to count up all the curses, see who has the fewest curses, and they would win. If there's a tie, I think it's whoever has the least amount of ghosts. Um, let me see. The player with the fewest curses wins. If tied, the player with the fewest ghost tokens win. And if there's still a tie, you share the victory. And that's it. And that's how you play Don't Go In There. Let's go up the top, see what you think about it. What do you think, son? What do you think? All right, well, that was Don't Go In There. So let's talk about the components. Now I have the deluxe version. I don't know how different it is. I do know the deluxe version comes with this wooden planchette, which is awesome. And it comes with some extra cards, uh, which I, is symbolized by this extra sheet. So there's an extra sheet here. So there's uh, five different sets of promo cards, which is cool. Uh, I'm not sure what else is different. I think it may come with an extra die. 
Speaking of those dice, they're glow in the dark. They're custom dice. They have cool little creepy faces on them on three of the sides. They're blank on three of the sides. They do glow in the dark. I don't know how well I can show that on the camera. Probably not at all, but they're really nice. Six of those. Um, cool little people meeples, kid meeples. They're all the same shape, just different colors. Not a big deal there. Um, this is Katie's favorite part ghost tokens every single ghost token is different doesn't matter what number it is one two they're all different so there's a couple ones here are a couple twos they're all different as well cardboard just awesome this one is real sleepy or sad love it uh, the cards are really have really nice art so there's a what is that a portrait there's some witches brew the amulet is amazing. It's a really nice art. The rule book is super easy to understand. It's a pr very simple game, but it lays everything out very nice in here. It tells you how many cards to get rid of in, more, in a two to five player game. Really nice. Um, yeah, so no complaints on the components. Oh, and the box turns into the dice tower. You put the insert in there. It looks like the house. It's got steps. Got this cool like area down here with a well with some Cthulhu coming out of it, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's a nice touch. You're using the box for more than just storing the game. I like that. So this game's fantastic. Uh, it's, it's a simple game. It's a game that anybody can play. It's fun, it's fast, it's silly, but it has a fun theme and it's just a good time. Sometimes I just wanna play a game that's fast and fun and it's just a good time and that's where this one is. So I'm gonna give this a BGM except the seal. This is going to get a 7.5 out of 10 on BGG, which is a 3.75 out of 5 wrenches on our arbitrary wrench scale. That means absolutely nothing, but we have to give it the games that we enjoy. And that's going to do. So that is Don't Go In There from Road to Infamy Games. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics. And as always, keep gaming.